Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I am excited to bring you this interview with Joseph Queller from JQ's Tex-Mex Barbecue in Houston. This one is really, really interesting because initially I thought we'd do some backstory and then go right into food. But for the first 10, 15, 18 minutes of this, we talk about life and we talk about where he grew up and how things were as he grew up because he grew up in the country and how things were simpler and slower. And then we talk about city life and we go into his work life after he turned 18 and it's a pretty intense job that he had. And we talk about how much time he spent doing that and how it's taken away from his time he spent with his daughter and how with COVID it's given him an opportunity to see his daughter more and spend more time in Bonn and how that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this crazy pandemic. So this is not ex exactly how I expected this to go, but it's it's all in the most wonderful way. We do talk about his pop-ups and his food and how he got into barbecue and how the barbecue family, people like Ernest Cervantes and Robert Sierra and Robert Jacob Lerma and Patrick Fijis, all these people that kind of lifted him up and JC and Fulmer who had the, the throwdowns in Houston. And so there's that and that aspect and how important that is and how important it is to let that family assist you. And then, and of course, Evan Leroy's name comes up again and some advice that Evan gave him that is instrumental in a lot of things that he does. And we talk about his birria and his chimichangas and his tamales. And one of the cool things that came out of this is that at the end of August, early September, he's going to have a truck. He's having that truck built right now. It's almost done. It's being built in Georgia. And then once that's set up and ready, he's going to be parking that somewhere and, and will be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. High quality stuff, probably still do the pre-order things, but, but everything he does is he does deliberate, make the food stand out, be delicious, amazing quality, utmost customer service. It was a very refreshing, wonderful conversation. I am so glad that we got a chance to connect that we've been trying to connect for a while. So this actually happened to be the perfect time. I know you guys are going to really enjoy it. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. Subscribe on the YouTube side if you're just listening to the podcast. There's a YouTube version of this at youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. Check it out. I also have a website at Kevin's BBQ Joints with all the podcasts, all the YouTube stuff, compilations, different things I'm doing. I'm putting a lot of content. It's all in celebration of barbecue and barbecue joints. So I want it to be a place where you can come, spend an hour, two hours, 10 days, whatever, and really, really see why I love the people and why I love barbecue so much and hopefully it'll get you inspired if you're a small joint big joint maybe you'll find some inspiration in a side dish or a, a dessert from a different place so there's that the kevin's barbecue joints podcast and youtube show is sponsored by treaty oak distilling check them out at treatyoakdistilling.com but at the end stay safe i hope you enjoy this thank you joseph That's cool, how things man. are so different huh it's weird man it, but it's you know at the same time i'm here with her so i've spent 15 years machining for 60 70 hours a week and i've never really had a chance to bond with my daughter so see at the same as bad as it is you know at the same time i'm actually get to you know like find out who my daughter is mm -hmm. i think that's kid. that's the thing that we'll all take from this is that special connection that we have with our loved ones because no we never would have gotten this ever right ever ever yeah no? and and it's like for good and for bad like you but it's still i think that yeah, that's that's amazing. It's machining. So let's let's go. Ahead. Did you grow up outside of Houston? I grew up in mostly in Houston, but I did a lot of back and forth between like the country. So like Lake Jackson. So like if you go like towards Ronnie Killen's joint uh -huh. down on like Pearland, and you just kept going down 288 for about 45 minutes, that's where you find us. Oh wow, what was that like? I I considered myself like a country boy more than I did a city you know city kid when I was growing up. You know, after about second, third grade, we really settled down in Houston and kind of moved to Spring Branch and went about being uh, city slickers. Versus what is <laughs> That's so funny. To, it's interesting to hear that because a lot of people don't know what was. So what was the country life like? What would that, would that it's be? It's slow. A it's slow, man. It's it's much slower than than city life. And it's hard to really quantify what that is. Uh -huh. But there's. There, I mean, as a kid, I guess, you know, now I'm nostalgic about it, but, uh -huh. you know, even then, you know, that you're, you're kind of almost more carefree because there's less things to worry, less dangers around you. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's better. Like, is it, I, I was reading something, I was, re I'm reading a book, uh, it's Nick Offerman, the guy from, uh, 
Parks and Rec, the guy that played Ron yeah, Swanson, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. he talks about how he would make his own fun. Like that's what then they live on. They live like on a farm almost. It's funny that you say that because I was about to mention like instead of worrying about like city dangers, you could just like jump around on bumblebees and squash and like make a game out of squashing like bees and wasps and like until you got stoned. Like little weird things like that. It's just different about yeah. see we and we had our own like chickens in our chicken coops and so we i was you know raising chickens with my grandmother when i was a kid oh wow that's, so that's really... like you're waking up in the morning your job is to go and clean the chicken coop grab the eggs bring them in for breakfast you're eating the fresh eggs right there and like one of my most diehard memories of growing up like that is my grandmother taking one of our chickens i guess it was it was their time she you know and by dinner that night, we had fried chicken, parted it, fried it. I mean, and I have the cast irons that she used for that. Oh, and that, I was probably like seven, eight years old. See, that's really cool. And that's, that's actually like another thing when I was reading that last night, he was talking about how you saw that progress, like that you have a pig or something. And then that pig was on your table, like two weeks later or something. It was just yeah, I mean, and it, and it really, it connects you to the animal. Mm-hmm in a way that you would never get. And to your food and what you're doing. Yeah, you know, you you raised that animal. It 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 had a purpose Mm -hmm. versus just what I mean, it gave us it gave us eggs, you know, it gave us life, it gave us, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time, it served its ultimate purpose. Mm -hmm. And and you have that connection on the farm. You don't have that connection going and buying you know, eight pack of drumsticks from the from the grocery store. And that you let go bad in your fridge and then you're like Instead, like you're not going to do that to the chicken that yeah, you raised. Yeah, there's no waste. And, there's no yeah. waste on a farm. That's interesting. No that, and that's a, and that's a special thing that you have, and it's hard to probably instill that in your daughter. Or it's it's you try your best, but it's also right. you, to grow up that way is is special. And it was a different time too. You're roughly you're probably a little bit younger than me, but things have changed so much. And now look at look what we're dealing with. How are how is your family dealing with this? We've actually been pretty you know pretty okay. Now I did. My sister did test positive. She called us oh. and told us that she test positive two weeks ago. Oh, I didn't and know that. She should be coming out, but now, but she's she's high risk because she's she's a cancer survivor. So uh. it's like you have all these things, and then of course we were everybody was so scared, and you know that's that fear's kind of leveled out, and now you really have to pay attention to those around you that really, really mm-hmm. need it, and you know, and that's and it's it's no wonder why things like masks and things, you know, you know, social distancing is so important to because of people like my sister mm-hmm. that you would never know walking around that she was ever sick because she's, she's recovered, you know, and she's, she's fine now, but still, she's still high risk and had, mm-hmm. and it had a chance to turn because of the nature of things. So was she hospitalized? Did no, she to- no, actually, no. luckily it was, it was still a mild case. So as far she's as that goes, even she's for the high lucky. risk folks, she's one of the lucky, but a lot of people that are high no, risk. No, usually not. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's the her. biggest concern. And I, I saw someone, this is like early on, like in March and uh, probably around the same time you guys, you talked to JC around then I saw a guy out, a kid outside of an elevator in, in my complex. And I said, you're not going to wear a mask. This is getting kind of crazy. He's like, well, I, I'll be fine. I'll survive. And I'm like, well, your grandma might not, or your uncle or aunt, like it's, that's who you're protecting. Yeah. You know, behind the, behind the screen, you kind of focus. I look at your screen as like blinders, for a horse, you know, like you focus so much in about yourself and you kind of tend to forget even the people that are important to you, how important it is for them to be safe. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. The screen in general, like for a lot of things. Yeah. That's actually a great analogy. Like just in general, people are just so focused on promoting themselves and being them. Like it's such, it's a weird world. It's a very weird world. And and we didn't grow up in that kind of world. Uh You know, we grew up in a, in an analog world where phones were rotary. And mm-hmm. you waited for your important stuff in the mail for two, three weeks. You yes. know, like we're the last kind of uh-huh. connection to that to that old. Yeah, like it's now. It's like so fast. Like there's no turn it back. My dad used to get checks man. in the mail from a business and then sign them and then mail them to the bank. <laughs> and then mail them right back out, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like the, for deposits, you'd mail to the bank, and I'm like, really? That's what people did. And the and the reality is, I, I miss a lot of the, the simplicity mm-hmm. the way the world was. And, yeah. and that was, you would, you, um, like going back to the farm, that's, you know, it, it didn't get more simple than that. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was your chores, you had fun, and then you had dinner. And that was, 
you know it was it was that that was it yeah that's what well, that's today that, that, it's like especially yeah. in the world today like now you got to wake up get your get your kid on zoom you know get your day started try to do your social media you know and, and promoting your business and then get your get your kid back on something learning because they've been watching you know bluey all day you know and you didn't even notice it no it's just it's a, it's a weird world man you know? uh, it is you bizarre. order a car park it's here in the morning and it's like okay wow. that is so crazy you have to wait like two months you know? No, it's, it's, it's so true. From then, where did you go? Did you, what did you end up, what career path did you take? So right out of high school, um, I had a buddy that I graduated with and, and he had a, his brother-in-law was in a machine shop and he was, I, I had literally taken a, I had just signed for a job to wait tables at this, this place that's no longer even around. It's called Amazon Grill. Okay. And I was going to literally wait tables. And he was like, Hey man, I got this job. It pays like 14 bucks an hour. It's night shift. It's like 12, 14 uh, hours a night, but you know, it's good money. And I said, okay, yeah, that sounds better than being a, a waiter. And from that moment on, man, it's, I went from, and that, this was a grind shop, a car by grinding shop. Yeah. Wait, what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? Because I'm fascinated by anything you do with people do with their hands. And so, but I, it's also not easy work at all. Yeah. So basically like for all, most of my experience is in oil field. So I've made that oil field sense. parts for down hole, upstream, completion, wellhead, all kinds of stuff. Now that company, they specialize in ball valve technology. And if you, if you've ever seen a ball valve, like on, like on a pit maker pit, you turn the valve and it has a bore through it. So it's closed one side and it's open. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. So though they carbide coat those to add strength, and durability and rust resistance to that. And we have to take that carbide grinded ball and grind it spherically within one thousand of an inch. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so yeah. crazy. All the way around. So there's a lot of different techniques to achieve that on one specific ball. That was my first job. Wow. How, <laughs> yeah, so, so, was, did, so did you, was that, it was super repetitive, right? Oh yeah. but. At the same time, you worked on a different variety of, of sizes. Oh, okay. So depending on the side, you had a different technique. You know, you would have to use a drill with a, a special made mandrel and just circle on top of the thing all the way like this for 12 hours a day until it was ground perfectly within one thousand. Are there shavings and stuff all around? Like it's, it's No, work. It's, it's coating. So carbide dust. So you were covered head to toe in a black, in a black dust. It's, it's from all day and you get home, you take a shower, you start coughing up black loogies oh. You wake up. You're still, you, you wake up still feeling dirty. So before you go in again, you take another shower wow. and you're still coughing up black loogies. My, my foreman, he, he literally croaked sitting, sitting there on the job, just fell over because his heart, his heart, his heart and his heart and his lungs had hardened from the years of breathing that stuff in. And fun fact, <laughs> that shop is the one that blew up here in Houston. And it That's the that one? <laughs> Holy heck. Wait so, wait, so did you see him die on the spot? <laughs> no, I had already moved on. <laughs> okay. Because I knew after a year. This is the like, craziest hey, conversation, Joe. I love like, this. This is so interesting. That's so wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different, different than your average barbecue combo. I'm I love it. I love that. it. Wow. That is, I mean, I, I don't love that he passed away. That's terrible. So then do you have any lung issues now? No, no, no. Um, well, Asthma? To be determined, you know, because after, after that, I, I went into manual side, like standard lathing, milling, you know, using the old school stuff. Yeah. And then I moved, within a few years, I had moved into CNC, which is automated machine. Oh, the router. And I've been that, yeah. doing automated machine for like 12 years. Those machines um, are amazing. Those are so killer. And if you're good at it, they pay well. I can imagine they're not easy to figure out. <laughs> like it's no, a- no, no, no. I, but by the time I retired last year from machining, I had finally got to the point where I determined what you were going to pay me. Wow. Not, not the other way around. So I walked away from machining at 28.50 an hour. And that was 10 to 12 hours a day. You know? That is not bad at all. Like there's people that would die for that. That's amazing. And the, the cost though is, like I said, it's not watching your family grow up. Yeah. You know, not being there because that requires 12 hours to 14 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then sometimes Saturday, and then sometimes Sunday. Yeah. And there was, right when my daughter was born, 2015, 
14, oh, well, like by 15, her first birthday, I worked like four months without missing a day. Like, uh. Just straight. And the way the market was, it was so bad that even though I did all that, I still couldn't afford to really give her her first birthday party. Oh my gosh. So that was the, that was the wake up call, you know, like I've been spending all my time putting millions of dollars, millions upon millions and millions of dollars into other people. Owners. Yeah. And have nothing to show for it. And that's, and that's that, and that's a huge wake up call for a lot of people. And a lot of people live their whole life that way. And then it's hard, man. I you, not you're talking like, about, you're talking about changing your whole perspective on mm-hmm. life. And that's hard to do. And it's, and it's, it's scary and it's, oh yeah uh, it's intimidating. It's the, it's the worst. I w- so what was the moment that made you switch over? Like it's, cause there could be people listening to this thinking my life is going nowhere. And especially now with COVID people get even further into depression. Um, or do you even know what that moment was or was it just? Yeah, gradual? yeah, I do. I, I do. Um, as far as like taking the leap and doing it full time for JQ. Yeah. Yeah. That came last November. Okay. And don't get me wrong, man. I'm fortunate. Like I've, I've, I met a lot of the right people. I, I, I bonded with a lot of the right pit masters. I made a lot of long lifelong connections and friends and, and, and our product has helped elevate us quickly, Yeah. but it was still very hard. It was still a grind. It was still the pop-ups that didn't pay off. It was, it's still a lot of stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's still a lot. And it's still scary to say, man, can I really do this? But last year, I, I mean, I just, I was still coming back from my knee injury. I mean, and I'm still, I still am. And it's, it was just kind of like, I had already been disenfranchised with machining as an industry, you know, because the ups and downs of oil. And I was literally hanging in by a thread and just in wanting to take the leap. Yeah. And I joined, a, I joined a company because I left, a, I left my, my shop, my last shop because they had me in a machine shop across the street from the tooling crib, okay? And I had to walk oh. back and forth oh. de- like four or five times during just one setup, two to three setups a day, knowing that I had a bum knee, knowing that there were machines across the, machi- the street that they could put me on, but they just needed me to make money on this machine. So forget my knee, forget anything. And they knew you that. were injured. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm literally like limping because I, I had – by the time I went back to machining because I needed to go back to work, yeah. I had about 40, 40 degrees of bend in my knee. If, if you're that's 45, so yeah. I couldn't even make a, a, a right angle. So was it, f- was it fused together or was it the, the, no, ligaments? I had, I ruptured my, I ruptured my uh, patellar tendon uh. and that's the one that holds your kneecap in place. Uh-huh. Okay. That's the one up and down. Not yeah. really like the others. And not the, so the, 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 my kneecap went, from my knee to above into my thigh, like three or like three inches, three, four inches. Oh, oh. So when they got in there for surgery, they they realized it was ruptured to the point that they couldn't they couldn't reattach. So they had to make the choice to either graft or get a cadaver tendon. And so they grabbed a cadaver tendon and put it in my knee. So I have somebody's Achilles tendon in my knee as my wow. other tendon now. Yeah, yeah. My mom has some, like, she got, I think she has cadaver in her back. She had lumbar spinal fusion in November. Yeah, I tell you, man, like, it's it's such a little thing, like a a tendon, but it has a definite impact on you. Oh, yeah. Waking up to knowing that somebody else had to die to help you. Yeah, we talked about that a month ago. We were, like, we were just talking about it. She's like, do I have this? I'm like, yeah, you do. And and then her pain was so high that, yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it, it it's hard to wrestle with. But it's like that cycle. Time. It's almost like what we we're talking about with the chicken. Like it's giving back to you know. Yeah, like the ultimate. You know, like you're you know you've gone above and beyond serving your ultimate mm-hmm. purpose. You know, hopefully in life you were given everything you need to serve your purpose, whatever it is. You know, and it's the last gift that you death give. is going much above and beyond mm-hmm. any purpose that you ever had. Yeah. Life. Cause you'll never know necessarily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we don't know. I mean, maybe you know, <laughs> maybe you yeah, find maybe out you everything. Know, well, <laughs> <laughs> that part, that's, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, right. We got so, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this might go in a little longer than we thought. Now, uh, uh, no, for, so what, so were you cooking this whole time, like cooking for your family or how did you get into the cooking portion? Okay. So in 2012, I decided that like, I literally 
I was looking for something to take my focus from things that they didn't need to be focused on. And I just, it clicked one day. It was like, you know, start, start grilling, start smoking some. So it was like 2012, I bought a Weber kettle. I started watching barbecue pit masters and I seen this big chunky bottle named Ernest Cervantes <laughs> yes, do this Texas episode. And I was like blown away. I'm like, that looks really fun. And that guy, he represents like me, you know, like it, it, it was, it was inspiring. So I started, you know, little by little, we got a little like $40 smoke and grill set from Walmart that my father-in-law gifted us. Just man, rack a rib after pork butt. And then we moved to this house that we're in now and we, I got gifted a little junky, you know, offset. One yeah, of those, yeah, the uh, offsets you see offsets. all around. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> a rusted junky man. And I, I cooked my daughter's baby shower. I cooked a bunch of pork shoulders on that. And that was like five years ago and everybody was blown away by how that came out. How cool is that? What a great feeling too. That, oh, it was great. It was good. like, I still, I don't want, I don't even know if I've ever compared to, to that, like blowing people's mind. Like people come and eat our food. They expect good food. Mm -hmm. No one expected anything that day. And everybody was like, oh, you know, and I was like, I want to do that again. You know, I want, I want that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so by 2017, I did, and I write as Harvey was doing its thing, and oh, yeah. I decided to to start trying to do pop ups and stuff like that. And I was a big cyclist, a bicyclist, you know, and I did all the like social bikes rides around town, and oh, okay, do, like three or four times a week, I would ride my bike with friends and everywhere around town. Well, watch these social rides; they have a midpoint where they'll stop, have beers, some a food truck will be there, something like that. Oh, that's cool. And I was like, hey, what if I set up? as the midpoint and we slang like oh. barbecue sandwiches and stuff like that so my wife hopped on this journey with me man and she's completely supporting me the whole way so like on a wednesday night we would both get off work start cooking i would start cooking she'd start prepping and then thursday we'd get off work haul out to the scene set up our tent sell as many sandwiches and, and tacos and, and whatever so you did you were could. doing tacos at that time too we were doing tacos but not like what we do now yeah yeah yeah. but it was the basis of what we ended up like prep and you know, going with yeah um but we had like literally like 45 minutes to an hour to try to serve as many people as we could because that's all the midpoint is it's like a 35 40 you know maybe an hour minute uh, hour break and that was it man we and we would hit like 50 60 tickets in that one hour because so that taught, most, that taught you how to it, yeah, yeah most of the time it was just sandwich right so I was just like, da, 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 da. Yeah. bingo, boss. <laughs> and, this, and I really don't know how we jumped from there to the, like, the Houston barbecue scene, other than me becoming friends with Patrick Fegis on Facebook, him being like, hey, anybody out there want to come help us for a throwdown? I, thought, I was going to say, I knew it was connected somehow to JC and to Fulmer. Okay. It was the second, I think it was the second throwdown. Okay. And I think Patrick had won the first, I think. And so he was shooting for a repeat and I didn't really know Patrick or anything. We just kind of, I don't know how we met or anything. I don't really remember that, mm -hmm. but I, you know, DM'd him. I was like, Hey man, I'd love to help you. He's like, yeah, man, come on. And from that day, it was like indoctrination. Wow. I, I never well, that, and you're in that world that now you're in. Right. Right. We started cooking more and, you know, trying to, trying to do our best to get noticed and cause it's, it's the competition in, in Houston. We're all family, but it's like, you, you better if you want to stand out you better you better hustle and bustle it right like you got to work hard man it, the bar is also set really high in it's like now. it's like the tippy top man yeah. if, and and it's, it's so you if you really want it you really have to go and get it and it was like literally after that i went to one of his patrick's um first pop-ups at holler brewery after that and this i had met robert jacob lerma at the throwdown but he was at the pop-up taking his pictures and, uh, and, you know, he was like, Hey, you know, so what's it going to be, man? I'm like, you know, well, you know, me and my wife, we work full time, you know, I work about, and he just started going, you know what I'm doing, right? And the world's smallest violin. I'm like, you know what? He's like, look, man. A little if not Tarantino you, reference right there. <laughs> yeah. He was like, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Mm -hmm. He said, if, if you don't, somebody else will. So, it's, it's only a matter of how bad you want it. 
because I guarantee you somebody wants it just as bad if not more. So you need to take advantage and do what you can. Wow. Don't worry about all the, the working full time. And you'll look back at it one day and know it was worth it. You might not see it now, but you will one day if you stay at it. I didn't realize the, the Lerma connection too. Wow. Look at all those people. Good. Like it, it was Cervantes that you saw and then Fijis and then, yeah. My very first, the very first, like my very first, like outside of like Killings and Pearland, one of my best plate of barbecues ever came from Ronnie Killing Joint, ever. Uh, and it was like the inspiring though. But after that 2017 top 50 list came out, uh -huh. the very next weekend, we found our stuffs at Snow's. And Rick Perry showed up. He was like just grabbing his food to go. And like Aaron Franklin shows up. He's, hold, he's holding flowers and whiskey. He's, you know, giving flowers to Tootsie and whiskey to Carrie. And I'm like, is this for real? Like, is this really, is this really it? And I didn't even know Clay at all, but he saw me admiring the pit. He's like, hey, man, come back here. So he takes me to the back. Big old uh, Robert Sierra is standing back there just hanging out. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you know, yeah. like, this is this is this 2017. I don't really know anybody. These guys are these guys are stars mm -hmm. in, in what I'm doing. Yeah. And and Robert's like, hey, man, so what's up? What you going to do? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to cook like a Tex-Mex style barbecue. He's like, oh, so you mean like Valentina's in 2M? I'm like. Oh yeah, who? Wait, who's that? <laughs> and he's like, "Here, let me show you." And I'm like, "Holy Christ! Like, it's it's all there. Like, it's all there. These guys, these guys paved the way already. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're yeah, yeah, they're yeah, building yeah. the blocks." I'm like, mm -hmm. "Wow!" And he's like, "So, let me ask you, are you good on social media? And who's building your pit?" I'm like, "That's the first two questions that guy asked me." And I realized right then. How important it is to know uh -huh. who you are on social media <laughs> and who's building your pit. <laughs> wow, that's this is awesome. Yes, it's so true. That's so true. So it was like from the minute, from the from the minute I started, I've been getting tips and clues and hints on how to build your business and how to do this the right way mm -hmm. and, and show respect and not step on anybody's toes and not and not do anything to pollute the family. Just just do it through work, working hard, making the right decisions, and and just staying at it. Mm -hmm. Because the most the most thing I hear when I, when when people are like, "Man, you're doing so great," doing so, I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know, I say the same." I'm like, "We're very lucky." Like, no, nah, man, people see how hard you work. Mm -hmm. And also, too, you're like you're. I love what you're saying that you're like the people that the the people that brought you to where you are today. Because there's a lot of people who claim like. They act like it's just them. <laughs> like it's like just hard work. I think. It, but there's a lot of, you know, you need that help. You need, it's a family. It, it really is, man. Like it's, if I ever do a dish that I'm inspired by somebody, I'm going to give them the love for it. Yeah. Like we started doing birria and you will never, whenever anybody asks me, where did I get? The, I'm like, Chef Arash Karat. Chef Arash did them at, at a throwdown a couple years ago. They were like one of the best tacos I've ever eaten. I had a pop-up last year. It was a call. It was a taco collab, and I said, "Hey, chef, will you teach me how to make beer?" Oh. Said, yeah, man, no problem. I'll show you the easy way. I'll show you the hard way. <laughs> I said, "Show me the easy way, man." <laughs> but he showed me the basis of where, and then you know, through my own research, and 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 I just took that and what I learned and created my own version. So I'm not technically, I'm you know, I'm not just using it. I'm making mm -hmm. my own. It has my. It's own a play off of yeah. You know, it's Evan Leroy told me change four things. Any dish. You change four dish, four things about any recipe, it's your dish. That is great so, advice. That's a great takeaway. There's like 80 takeaways from this. This is killer. No, this, so like, and Evan Leroy, God, he, is, he has his hand I mean, everything. man, you, you'll, see, you'll see his barbacado <laughs> pop up on menus, you know, like things like that. Mm -hmm. Like that's an Evan Leroy signature mm -hmm. dish. And, you know, it's like, dude, just change four things. Change four things. Pay your homage. It's, it's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. a delicious dish. Pay your homage. But, but you make it your own. Yeah, make it your own. You know, don't don't just sit on somebody's thing. You know? So so then how so that from from 2017 were you doing pop ups while so you were doing pop ups while you were working full time full time and then in November of 2019 is when you jumped. I had a, yeah, I had a my three month review to see if I was going to go full time with the company I'd left mm -hmm. because they were like. Well, you know, we need you to work faster. I'm like, you got me walking. I said, man, you know what? Maybe you need somebody else. So I went down the street, same day, 
hired with a company that had been trying to recruit me for a while. After, you know, we, they, they knew the whole story, yeah. but it is what it is, man. Machining is a very high paced, you gotta be fast. You, the faster you are, the more money you make. And that's uh -huh. true. And I, and I prided myself on that. I couldn't go any faster. And after three months we had the review and they were like, you know, we love everything. Your, your work is top notch. It's been a long time since we've had anybody that's had that skill. You know, there's nothing, but we just, we just need you to go fast. <laughs> You're like, God damn. <laughs> and I was, you know what, guys? Look, man, I appreciate everything I've done for me. We had this talk when I came in here. I told you what the, the issue was going to be. If my knee allowed me to go any faster, it would. But you know what? I'm going to have to get up out of this meeting. I appreciate everything, but I'm going to go do my own thing. And this was right before Thanksgiving and Christmas. Scary like, time. I'm literally cutting off my income, my $70,000 income right before the holidays. And I, oh. I, I, I go home, I call my wife, I say, trust me. Were you popping up a couple times a week? Like, was it multiple? Yeah, we like, were. We were I thought we were you were a few days. Going at um, 4J Brewery, like, every other week. Mm -hmm. We were starting to get a lot of the press from Houston Chronicle, JC, the, the throwdowns, the, you know, this year alone, I, I mean, the Butcher's Ball, one of the best events of the year. Oh, yeah. I mean, man. We, we started getting invited to all these things to participate in. And it was like, okay, this is that moment where Lerma was talking about, you know, shit or get yeah. off the pot. <laughs> so let's talk about your menu. Let's talk about your food because I don't want to, it's like we've talked, which is like the life part. Like that, this is really what I, these are why I do these is because I want to get to know you and your philosophy and your, and, and who, your passion. That That's really, it's the people that really matters, but the food, let's tell people if they're, if they're sure, watching. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, our, our initial concept was my mom standing out there with us. 2017, she would stand out there and roll fresh tortillas, literally fresh tortillas off. And we we're like building tacos with our green sauce and onions right there. That was, that was the first concept. Yeah, yeah. But she got injured real bad. So we had to change the way oh. we, we, we did our thing. And so that's where I was like, Let's go with this real, what I grew up eating. Let's, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like at home what I was inspired by so much. My mom's cooking is fantastic, top notch. I love it. But I wanted to take Tex-Mex a different direction. So I, I thought, you know, like a combo plate at a real Tex-Mex restaurant, it's going to have like chimichangas, uh, enchiladas with the crispy taco, crunchy oh, yeah. taco, like things like that, like a yeah. real Tex-Mex combo plate. And that's what I grew up eating with my dad on the road. Hey man, that's what we started doing. It was like chimichangas was the first knot, and we did that with caramel tortillas, and it uh, was a hit. That 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 got us put on the map. Boom, that was that was the dish. So if anybody ever asked me what was the turning point, it was that dish. We we did a pop up with Willow's Texas barbecue with Willow and Jasmine, and that was one of the oh, dishes. Uh, okay, so let's so for the the uninitiated, a chimichanga is. It is a it's a, a tortilla a brisket and beans. We did refried beans, beef mm -hmm. tallow refried beans inside wrapped up oh, with beef tallow oh. yeah. and then you fry it off and then you, it's basically a, a gas station burrito that's where i was going with it you know like that awesome yeah, yeah, gas yeah. station burrito you eat beef and bean oh yeah that's it and then yeah. we put gesso on top of it and call it a day yeah. so that was kind of the direction we were going so we had tacos chimichangas and then we added tamales and so we started actually having ways to build a real combo plate and our sides are like Pollo, arroz con pollo, where I smoke the chicken, and then my wife, my wife will pull it, oh. and she makes the arroz and every, you know stews it all together. Oh. Her dad's recipe for our um, our beans, which I think killer, and yeah, then, for a good like that. And then we had like a pop up with Reveille. We did a luau, so we we I really started being able to like push the boundaries, and we did like a uh, beef cheek uh, lao lao ball, which I took beef cheek, sliced it up. We did a uh, a black bean and corn relish with a honey vinaigrette, lime and honey vinaigrette. Oh and uh, like white rice and uh, lime white rice, it, it, like stuff like that. And so now, no denying it, Beria. And Beria too, it's like, I'm in Los Angeles, so there's a lot of it, oh, yeah, like, yeah. but there's also a lot of bad, explain, explain really what it really is or what it should be. A lot of bland Beria, right? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah and I yeah, see it on yeah. like on the Instagram, I'm like, I wish I want that one. That's yeah, yeah. five so, miles away. <laughs> Beria basically is, and traditionally it's like, goat meat stew down with mexican spices chilies and then you pull the meat and then you use the dripping or not it's not really dripping it's actually a consomme or your broth and you infuse it into the dishes traditionally i think that more it was probably more eaten like a soup 
like a caldo, you know, and then it kind of made its way into a taco, but then it crossed the border into your scene over there, the Calimax side, yeah. and it just blew up, man. And there's a lot of guys over there that are doing it top notch level. Are they cooking it in the consomme, like on a flat top? Is that how you're getting? Because I'm it, there's a lot you're using of, mozzarella too, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like you could use a lot of different variety of cheese. We use mozzarella because it's it's great melting and has yeah, it's and great readily cheese. available, right? Like so, but you could use any variety of yeah, melted, yeah, yeah. good melty cheese. We we do our it's it's we, you can find a it cooked a variety of ways. The way we do it is that I stew I I take our brisket, I make a chili paste. Sorry, I make a chili paste for. It. And then I cube our brisket and our, and our oxtails and I marinate the brisket in that chili paste overnight. And then I reserve some of that chili paste and the water from making that chili paste. And then once in, I wake up in the morning, I start the smoker, I put that, that meat on the grill for a couple hours. And then I put it into the pot. I take the rest of that chili paste. I take the rest of that water. And then I add a little bit more water, some more spices and chilies into it. And let it, I let it go for four hours. And it's usually full apart tender, ready to go. I prep it by getting all the meat chopped, ready to go, add a little bit of the consomme into that pan, put it in a hot oil, and then I put a pot of consomme onto the grill, on the grill top, I use a 36 inch grill top, mm -hmm. and I have oil that I also take a little bit of that chili, and I'll infuse oil with that oh, chili, okay. and I have it there. So dip your tortilla into the chili, into the oil, chili oil, you put it on the plancha, get it nice and hot, flip it, get it nice and hot, add your cheese, add your meat, Add your onions and cilantro, add your consomme, fold, flip, serve. And it, and it has crispy edges. And then, and then do you serve it with the consomme? Is that, or with the, yeah, the, yeah. yeah we, we serve with consomme. And the crazy thing is we found out the hard way that that's not the case everywhere. So like we went up to a place in Austin, a real well-known place. It was like $2 tacos. And you're we like, yeah. And it didn't come with consomme. No, you had to buy The only size they give you was like a 32 ounce cup of consomme for like eight nine dollars like, that's oh, like for, okay. the, for the family yeah <laughs> I, yeah i get you but i get so you have two tacos or you four or ten mm -hmm. you still have to buy the 32 ounce. yeah know? i went to a place recently like not recently like, it seemed recently it was a year ago but it was they'd serve they give you a small one small cup of consomme but then they would i think if you wanted more you had to buy like a large yeah. thing yeah no this place we're buying it, just, it yeah. and it's it supposed to be good for hangovers and, or for colds and if i i mean honestly if i was for hangover, I would go with menudo still, you know, like that's the. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can work all though, like an actual beef call though with vegetables, just something hearty. Yeah. I think birria is as opposed to where like menudo, there's a lot of fat still. Birria is a lot of fat and it's really thick. It's really, really like ours is like very, uh, super was, filling, I, right? Hearty. And... Yes. It's just super filling. Like very, everything's really savory. You know, so. It's, so how, it's so how are people, are people ordering like a two tacos and a, like. A, oh, so right, like right now we do pre-orders. Okay. And. Oh yeah. Yeah. I saw on your website. Yeah. The, the yeah. pre-order is closed today, but okay. Right. So like we'll open this weekend. We're taking off for my daughter's birthday. She just oh, turned six. Awesome. Oh, um, nice. So by next weekend we'll be, we'll open it again. We'll set up somewhere just to fill orders that we have through the week. And so for that, we only give the option of six or 10. So, you, so people are just straight, are they buying sides too, or just straight up just. Tacos. No, like, so we'll serve it. We're doing our pork carnita crispy taco as well, which has a lot of the same technique. Um, and then like bar like barbecue by the pound, which all comes with like scratch made corn tortillas, cilantro, cebolla, and stuff like that. So like you could come pick up on a Saturday, you can come get a few pounds of barbacoa from us with scratch made tortillas and everything and, and go to town just like you would in any meat market. Oh, wow. You know? And that's, keeping the tradition alive in my that life. is keeping the um, tradition especially for the and yeah the people who haven't ever had that that's killer you could also buy ready-made tacos so is it ever, or is it all kits kind of like made? yeah so sometimes we do ready-made tacos it, i mean it, it can get real hectic for me because i've i've usually i've spent all night cooking yeah and no, I now i gotta that. stand in front of that plancha for another few hours which is equally exhausting so like if i if we get a ton of orders right away and there's like suddenly i need to do 45 tacos right now <laughs> Of just birria, and then yeah. we have to figure out how to put the flour tortillas or the corn tortillas down and get the other tacos down. Yeah. Sometimes it can get hectic. So right now, I guess generally we're trying to just do So during this time, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, the, or the crispy taco together, those two tacos, and then like buy the pound options. So you can technically build the same thing that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but as things change, 
as things like oh, that. Our, our trailer's coming, but like it's supposed to be here from Georgia this month. Okay. They'll finish all the fab, adding the, the equipment to it this month to next month. And uh, I, I'm, I'm shooting for end of August, early September, God willing, hopefully. Oh, yeah. That I'll get our trailer open and operating. Oh, nice. And, so, where will, uh, that, where will that be located? Or driving all around? Or No, I'm, I'm parking that. I'm parking it somewhere, man. And whatever business I can do from there is what I'll do from there. So, fo do. so follow you on social media to, to see for those sure, updates. For sure. And will yeah. that be multiple days then? Yeah. So, I, I at least hope to start for weekends, like maybe Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay. and maybe expand from there. But I really want to focus on a high quality product with, you know, really like attention to the Tex-Mex side of things and, and just change the scope of what it, what it means and then maybe build more days into that. But like, you're talking about tamales, beer, barbacoa, you know, and that's a lot of prep and all those kinds of things. Oh, yeah. So I would rather just focus those things a few days a week, do it at a high level and just try to sell out. You know? And will that, will that be a place where people are waiting or you'll have online orders as well? You're going to keep that kind I of I don't think we'll ever go back from having online orders. I don't think we'll ever go back from that. I think it's too lucrative. It makes sense that, but for parts. It's too easy. The, yeah. To, it's too easy. Everything's easy. By the time I go shopping for the pop-up, I've already been paid for the pop-up, you know? So uh, no, I know never, I, I've talked to many people. It makes a lot of sense. You're never actually taken out of your, your, your business bank account. Mm -hmm. If you can do it that way, you know, you're just adding to it. Mm -hmm. And it gives you that sense of security, that sense of, sure. of knowledge, sure. knowing that this is already sold. I think that's like, I've talked, I'm really good friends with Michelle and Andrew from Moose Craft Barbecue. And this has worked for them during this. It's, it's worked out really well. And it's, I, and a lot of people are doing that. It's, it makes sense. Now, can I afford to take a living from it right now? Yeah, mm, probably not quite like, you know, it's so it's still like, we're still dependent on my wife's income. She's still, she's, you know, she's still, uh, since she's been essential the whole time yeah. and she makes, you know, enough to sustain us, you know, yeah. so it's enough to sustain the business and, and continue on with our future endeavors. Hopefully after a few months of this passing, it'll be enough for us to, to, so. to take an income from it, you know? So, so social media and like, what's all the ways people can get a hold of you. So that way they can. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so on Facebook, JQ's text makes barbecue. You go to our page, like our, uh, like and follow our page for sure. Everything from Instagram is where I post. It, it all goes to Facebook, Instagram at JQS text makes barbecue. And that's that's where we really do a lot of our bulk of our social media. And, and off have, the off Instagram, you can link to your website. Yeah, that's right. And then whenever whenever the weekends we're taking orders, we let you know early in the week. Hey, the websites are open, and then we let you know in the week. Hey, the website's closing. Get your orders in. And so get your orders in those days. By that Saturday or Sunday, you know where to pick it up, and we we you know, just drop by. We drop it off in your car and you go. That's so great. That's I am so 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 happy that we got this to work today because today yeah, even today <laughs> it's been a challenge like overall to do this and then today was but it shows that we both wanted to and it was meant to be so I'm really really happy. I really appreciate you taking the time with us, man. Yeah, thank you so much, and I can't wait to visit when I am when able to when. The, hey the man, maybe you'll different. see me over there on your side of things before too long because I oh, yeah, yeah. Let, please let me know. Yeah, I yeah. want to do some tacos and stuff over there. So good have, hearing from you, brother. Yeah, great to talk to you. Have a great day, and I hope your daughter's birthday is wonderful. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.